all a part of the process. Mm-hmm. How you deal with it is one going to kind of show character, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's also going to define a learning process of how you dealt with it, good, bad, and different, and to be able to carry that on and display that going forward. Welcome back to the Pure Playbook. I am Dr. Dustin Boston here with the athletic trainer herself, Aaron Rogieri. Here we go. Another episode. This is, I wouldn't say bittersweet. I don't think a whole lot's going to change, <laughs> but we've got some, we got some pretty cool news. And I think if we, uh, I think a lot of people will understand how this is going to go because uh, life's dynamic, life changes. And in the efforts of always giving real world, we don't hide anything, mm-hmm. but real world application and, you know, great healthcare services for parents and their student athletes. Um, there's also, there's the three pillars within that is physical, mental relationships. Mm-hmm. And this could be, uh, for some, a testing time. Yeah. But at the same time is a very good aspect. So as we've been building out the content for the Pure Athlete and us at least speaking on in the world of sports, what we need to see with student athletes and well, the resources they need and how we're trying to provide them faster and faster. Um, there is also a, a dynamic with this that uh, is kind of ever changing, but it, you can look at it in a couple different ways. And I'm excited about it for some aspects, but let's just kind of jump in because this is how relationships in my perspective should work. Um, everybody's life is different, but a lot of times we take life changes, especially when you're close to people and there's a lot of things going on and, um, you know, everybody's direction and it's not even that it's changing, right? But a lot of people can take change and be like, oh my gosh, that's so terrible or just cut people because they're no longer in the same circle. So with that, um, you have taken Mm -hmm. an awesome position, Mm -hmm. um, as, an athletic trainer yeah. again yeah. Um, at Missouri Baptist. Yep. So, which is super exciting. So, obviously, something being here in the practice side, you got to experience a lot of things and, and a lot of things you like, a lot of things that you've learned that you'd like to be better at, or yeah. a lot of th- resources that you've learned from us, mm-hmm. and a lot of things that you don't prefer, which is a part of life. Right. And when you build relationships, like we are friends here. And mm-hmm. I tell, I talk about that all the time. And it's not that you're going away from the pure athlete. We're still podcasting. You're yeah. still going to be in the realm. We're still going to be helping us forge forward and creating relationships. So it's kind of a cool dynamic that when you've, you, and I think you're still testing and be like, okay, let's go yeah. do this. Yeah. But it's still in the same realm of now that you've been here, I think it's pretty cool. And I, I hope not for my own reasons or cloud or whatever, but I think I'm excited that you've had experience in the healthcare office here Mm -hmm. to see like, Ooh, instead of just maybe going out and doing the AT things and not having a different perspective, like, Oh wow, these, there is more resources that they need and being cognizant of that. And how do we give it? And having you take that there Mm -hmm. with a little bit of a open minded per different perspective, that word, that my famous (laughs) perspective word. So, Fill us in. What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Um, I think just like, like we, we always say, like we are wanting to change the things that are happening out there. So I don't think there's a better time to do it. I don't think there's a better way to actually fix things by actually like doing it and mm-hmm. being being the AT who's going to have who are her own team. I'm not sure exactly which one. It might be uh, soccer. It might be football um, that I'll be in charge of and take care of and Mm -hmm. have their own rehab schedules and their own practice schedules and kind of get to dictate how their treatment goes. Mm -hmm. Um, And with the university I'm going to, it is a smaller university. Mm -hmm. So kind of without having that like D1 pressure, I get to fix it kind of at the top. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's a pretty good dynamic with everything that they are trying to up level and the transitions that they're going through and, um, you know, looking 
and having more of an open mind of like if we're taking a, a bigger step as we're revamping this area of mm-hmm. our program and our school and also on a bigger scale for them, um, it sounds like they're open yeah. to what else is out there. What yeah. else should we at least be looking at? Um, which is going to be super cool. Yeah, well. there's a lot of new leadership over there. So they're kind of like d- allocating the time and the energy and the like school funds to fixing the AT program also. And there's nothing wrong with it now, but it needs to be evolving with mm. the school. And that's with any, any school, but this one especially, like they are doing the things and wanting to do the things that are going to make it better for the athletes. And so it's not just like a stuck in a stagnant, typical um, like university job that you feel that you mm-hmm. hear about. So, yeah, the only thing consistent in life is change. Yeah. In Texas. Mm, that too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that too. <laughs> the only thing consistent is change. And you either embrace it and you can build a story around it that sounds like it sucks and be all pissed off about it. and Or you can embrace it and look at it from a great perspective. Mm-hmm. But also the experience that no matter what you do, whether it's here, whether it's your scenario, mm-hmm. whether it's my scenario, I mean, my dynamic here is changing as well. Yeah. And it's all for the good where... Yes, we might be here a little less, mm-hmm. but it's all an effort to have a bigger impact yeah. to push towards the funnel of serving student athletes better. Right. So, um, when's this all go down? Give us the timeline. Yeah. Um, so I'm starting there on Monday. Yeah. So we are we're trucking. Yeah. Um, we start like preseason kind of screening stuff. Mm-hmm. They're doing it now. So we're just kind of jumping right in, mm-hmm. which no shock here. We're just, you know, cannonballing <laughs> right in. Um, but all of the like physicals and the checking off the health histories and all of that stuff happens before they even move in. And then they move in August 1, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Athletes kind of move in from like August 1st through like the 7th. And then we get rolling. What all fall sports are there? Football, so there's, soccer. Yeah, there's men's so- oh, so the Is soccer's the, the soccer's are both in the fall. So men's and women's are in the fall okay. also, and then football, um, and then. Uh, I mean basketball's yeah, later. Yeah, basketball's fall, later-ish. It's like a mid. Yeah. yeah fall, but winter. those are really the big ones to start off with. Okay. Yeah. So next week, jumping right in. Mm-hmm. Now it'll be interesting to see what your schedule will be Mm -hmm. because still having a place here this is by no means are shunning you (laughs) like this is um it's just it's a dynamic change that you had to figure out like physically where do i want to be yeah so we certainly appreciate you being here on site but also i mean there's still things that we're going to be doing together Mm -hmm. and we've already talked about continuing us and what I've wanted from the beginning. I love the dynamic of us doing this together. Yeah. Um, and this is going to continue to grow because who knows down the road, you could do that and be like, Ooh, okay. At least I have that experience now. Maybe I love it. Stick with it. Maybe I don't change. Maybe as things continue to grow here, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, like with what we're doing and forging inside the practice with the pure athlete, Mm -hmm. We don't have hundreds of millions of dollars to advertise and Mm -hmm. make this. We would love that. So for a lot of you listening, like continue to share that. We have a great few handful, like more than a few handfuls of athletes and now their parents taking action here too. But it's going to take a lot of sharing on your part and us continuing to forge. And it's like, you're so full of piss and vinegar and this (laughs) is going to take off right away. And it doesn't always happen like that, but the way we're trending is still in the right direction. So having us and having Dr. Nate here, um, Tyler, who's already at Missouri Baptist, who spends time here as well. PRN, as you call it. Yeah. PRN. um, The cool kids is, is great, but still do, Doing some of the uh, pure athlete evaluations mm-hmm. with the technology we use to baseline athletes from a higher dynamic level um, is still going to be done. So figuring out what that schedule looks like, yeah. um, we're still going to be doing it here. And then ideally, you know, you have said you still want to be in on that too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But um, I think it's super cool that even innately and subconsciously, some of the perspective you're going to be able to give now with the experience here, like, hmm, with what I've learned there, there could be a different avenue and you'll be able to with authority in your position because athletic trainers are in higher regard, Mm -hmm. especially at the university. I mean, you are frontline, you are sideline, you are, they're going to take what you say, not with a grain of salt and with an ounce of gold really. Yeah. And so it'll be cool to kind of keep up and have those conversations going forward and, and hearing some of the feedback as you 
you know, potentially drop seeds with the next things that maybe we can help with or things that you could bring to us and be like, hey, there's a lot of talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be great for student athletes. And it's going to help us evolve as a brand that's continuing to build those resources. Yeah, I think, yeah, for sure. And I think it's just like a really good example of just like having a relationship with people and yeah. not um, making it all about not like, contingent. yeah, there isn't like any sort, there isn't any reason why like everything that I've learned here is going to get taken here, there. And then mm -hmm. whenever I've learned there is like, it's going to all like mesh together and there's no need to like cut off things just like that. Right. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that's the important thing on the relationship side. And, yeah. and that's why, you know, talking about this is one, we want to keep everybody in the loop because the last thing you want in any scenario of life is you don't want somebody else writing the story that they think happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's some bad breakup or anything. It's like, no. So we're going to give you guys the information of here's what's changing, here's what's not. But I think that's important, you know, for student athletes to know and for parents to know to help their student athletes realize is when, you know, there are tough decisions, I wouldn't even say tough decisions, but when there's bigger decisions to be made, mm -hmm. um, you can look at it a few different ways. Take the positive side and, and really don't burn a bridge mm -hmm. and really set up the relationship before that ever, ever happens. And that's what, I've always been about is, you know, it's not contingent, like you were just saying on, well, because you're here, we love you. And when you're gone, you're cut off, you know, and sometimes people need to do that mm -hmm. to create and, and that's up to them. But um, relationship wise for student athletes, it's like, no matter, because there's phases that they're going to go through right now that are similar to this. Right. It just doesn't look the same. It's like, okay, you're leaving high school and going to college. Okay. You're switching club teams for mm -hmm. whatever reason. And it's like, you have two options. You either shun them or you go talk shit or you, you go create this thing that you have in your head to make you feel better about the decision you're making, yeah. which is real easy to do and could be misconstrued or could be really a a false sense of security for that person's self to create that barrier when it's just not necessary. It yeah. happens a lot. I mean, you hear a lot of the drama when guys get traded and they start bashing the other team mm -hmm. they were playing for and that organization was terrible and behind the scenes you have, it's like, that doesn't always need to be the case. Sometimes there is that. It's like, oh my gosh, it was corrupt. It was that, it was this. I don't, that, that's not what happened here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something to take into account real life experience from things that we go through here in the office yeah. with growth and change and evolving and then, you know, employees moving, changing, evolving, and to be able to carry that on and display that going forward. Yeah. Whatever yeah, I've, circle you're in. I've always like thought and said that I think the easy way, the easy way out of like leaving anything or exiting something is to like take the more drama filled route mm -hmm. and like the, the contingency route. I think that's a, a scapegoat. It's an easy way to kind of just mm -hmm. like have in your own mind, like a, clean cut uh, like whatever but I just don't think that that's yeah. one healthy for you <laughs> it's not healthy for anyone and it's just like it's the easy way out yeah um it's building it's it's building it's building the wall yeah and you know and a lot of people will do this so this might be a little different episode because I love the psychology side of things and I am far from perfect there's things because I used to do this mm -hmm. this was my default and I think this is innately a lot of people's default as I'm sliding down I know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a lot of people's default is it creates comfort to just give yourself a false sense of I'm right they're wrong mm -hmm. and you create this barrier and you talk shit or you dramatize things to be able to then convince yourself that it was so bad, so wrong, they're, that person's terrible, that organization, that team, that coach, or whatever it is, and you're able to build that because I think it's a false sense of security, like you said, because now that you've said that, you know if anybody finds out, mm -hmm. they will cut you, yeah. and it makes it easier for you for them to do it on your behalf because mm -hmm. of everything you said, yeah. and it's like, no. Yeah. And so, yeah, definitely not the way it needs to be as kids transition teams, as coaches change, mm -hmm. as things develop, evolve. It's like take a breath because more often than not, I would say 70, 80 percent of the reaction to a lot of that is just that. Yeah. And especially these young athletes that we're pouring into that haven't even thought about things like this and maybe their parents haven't even thought about things like this mm -hmm. um and sometimes you know the, the parents could 
I wouldn't say be the root cause of the problem, but they just don't think about it that way where it's like then they find all the bad things about whatever organization, coach, terrible, you know, whatever they build that to then, and, and that's what the athletes see. And mm-hmm. it, I wouldn't say a lot of, I wouldn't say 80% of it's intentional, Yeah. but I think it's, like you said, just the comfort of the psychology of the mind. Well, if I say all this and they find out about it, oh, well, because then they'll do the hard thing that I'm not willing to right. do or right. the maturing process of just be, yeah. like, <laughs> just yeah. be grateful for the time or, you know, send the gift afterwards or, you know, appreciate, still shout out, you know, follow, like, unless there was something so, so traumatic and legitimately almost law breaking, terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, even at that, just leave it. Yeah. Like walk away from it because the more you want to talk, dramatize about it, if it was that damn near legal breaking area, you're just keeping yourself in it longer while not even being really in it. Right. So why subject yourself to that? Yeah. And I think it just says a lot about like how people exit and leave, their move on and like go to different teams says a lot about their character um and just like remembering that that is still an impression even Mm -hmm. though you are like leaving maybe your club team or you're in the transfer portal and you're going to a new place like you're still leaving an impression Mm -hmm. um that's still gonna matter at some point again like you just you said it earlier like you don't want to burn a bridge because that coach that you are leaving maybe he's gonna follow like you just never know who you're gonna like need to have in your corner and not even just like in sport, but just like in life, um, there's going to be certain people that you're going to want to call to help you do certain things. And if you leave on a bad note for your, your own sake and like showing like poor character, you're not going to want to do that again. Right. And it's like, at the same time, it's like, okay, look at all of these guys that you look at across all professional sports, how many athletes, and it might be a smaller percentage, but there still happens quite often where, um, a player of whatever sport ends up back at a team mm-hmm. they were previously at. Yeah. And maybe most of that organization's the same. Um, so, it, because it would suck to have a team, see if we can pick one out. Um, what sport do we want to go after here? Pick like a sport. Fo- I feel like football I'm going to know football. the most about. Okay. So that's like, I'm going to go with my Steelers then. <laughs> so it's like the Steelers on this high, Mike Tomlin having, well, he's, I think he's still has never had a losing season, but winning Super Bowls. And then all of a sudden you go through this dip Mm -hmm. a little bit. And uh, then all of a sudden they become more successful and you actually liked it, but you talked all this crap to make yourself feel about, I want it out. And then you created all this drama about it that when you actually enjoyed something about it and now they're back on the high and you lost all opportunity to maybe request a comeback Mm -hmm. or be looked at. It's like, man, I'd really like to go back there, but I burned that bridge. But, you know, so leaving that open because it's like, what if there is opportunity? What if the door is left open from whatever organization? Like, look, totally understand where you're at. It's a good move for you and your your family. Great. If there's any, ever anything you need from us, or if you ever want to come back here, Mm -hmm. we'd love to have the opportunity to have you on our roster again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's no different in this situation. Right. Because then if you burn that, you're like, man, they told me that. And I totally just ruined that. And I could have requested back because now, you know, somebody like the Chiefs, I mean, the Chiefs are a great example. Right. Like, where have the Chiefs been ever with, with before these last five, six years? Yeah. And now it's like, man, now they're, what, three in a row? Right. <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> what are we, like, why subject yourself to that? Yeah, I think, and especially, like, if you're talking colleges, like, you you request to put yourself in the transfer portal, but then you don't get to choose where you go. Mm-hmm. And so you can't, like, already have this preconceived notion of these, like, maybe five schools that, well, you don't like how you didn't get along with their coach and who's the first people those people are going to call when they have yeah, interest exactly. in that player? They're going to call. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, you just, especially when it comes to athletics, like, everyone knows everybody. And <laughs> especially in our little town, yeah. <laughs> which is We've not little. It's so small. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah. So just don't leave anyone with an impression that you wouldn't enjoy also. Right. So, well... I'm excited for it because it'll be interesting to see, not for any other reason, but I'm interested to see, because as you graduated, before you had your ATC license, you Mm -hmm, were here. mm -hmm. So you got your ATC license after you graduated. You were here. Mm -hmm. It only took you six months to take the (laughs) freaking test, but you finally did it. Uh, But being here in this environment, some of the things you liked, some of the things you disliked, um, it's also helped me in many aspects. So thank you for allowing me that growth. But also, too, it's going to be interesting to see, like, I'm excited to 
obviously we're all still close. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're going to talk about it, but to see, you know, some of the things that you're learning there that you prefer, don't prefer, but it's like, we talk about that here all the time. It's like, we're going to have to do things we don't 110% enjoy all Mm -hmm. the time. So some of the things that we think we like, no different than me here in chiropractic, there's things that I have changed um, with chiropractic, with the rehabilitation side, with um, the recovery side. Mm -hmm. There was things in my original practice that I found that I liked doing, but if I could do this instead, I would yeah. and, and learning that. And it's just going through that process and attaining that experience by just cannonballing in. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting to see. It's like, Oh man, like I thought I was going to enjoy this. I really don't good at it. Like I'll, I'm absolutely going to do it. But yeah. like, if I didn't have to do that ever again, being on in this sector now, I, I would love not to, but yeah. so it'll be interesting to see kind of how that develops. Yeah. I'm already not ready to um, fill up waters. <laughs> That's my least favorite um, activity that you have to do. Yeah, can is, we get interns to fill water jugs, the please? Ice. <laughs> yeah, apparently we might get students, so they're going to be doing that. But I have a, a patch for my old my old kit that I'll bring with me that says, not your water girl. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, like they so. said, perfect football. Uh, Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the jugs. You can pick it up. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not. No, you can, pick up, you can pick up your water bottle. It's all right. If you weren't concussed, you're about to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, it'll be, uh, and, and like I've told you, it's like, you know, a lot of chiropractors do have athletic training background. Mm-hmm. Me being athlete, like from Cuba, Missouri, it wasn't until I got into the higher levels where um, we had athletic trainers. Um, I uh, fortunately didn't have very many huge injuries, mm-hmm. concussions, things like that. So I didn't really interact. Like I knew a lot of them, um, appreciated them, respected them. And always, like we have said before, they deserve so much more mm-hmm. opportunity and recognition and, and leeway and, and, you know, the way they're served can oftentimes be better as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know a whole lot of what does that actually look like um, as far as an AT's perspective and what do they actually do and how do, is there room to incorporate it with what we're doing with the pure athlete? And I think now we're finding, we're finding more of that now. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's just an avenue that I haven't, which a lot of my friends, I've got friends all over the place. I can name five of them right off the bat, including Dr. Nate, that have some sort of either educational background mm-hmm. or true, they were an athletic trainer for yeah. a couple of years. And, and it's then, like, yeah. I want to do the chiropractic thing to see more student athletes and, and yeah. do things like that. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be good. I'm going to go sit in the stands and watch, <laughs> you be, watch you be not the water girl. Yes, not the water girl. <laughs> Day one, lesson one. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm not your water girl. So what are they doing? So of what you know now and yeah. where they're at, you talked a little bit about they're doing screenings and stuff. So what do you know? Like, where are they at now? What does this look like now from transitioning to a 100% AT, 8 to 3, 8 to 4, 8 to 5 mm-hmm. role? Yeah. Like, what does that look like for you yeah. now? Yeah, so um, I don't really know, like, specifics, but... Like, generally, depending on what team you're with is, like, kind of what hours you're going to be there. So um, if your team practices from 3 to 6, then usually you're there two hours before for, like, treatment, rehabs, um, setting up the field if it's not already set up, um, filling the water, <laughs> um, and doing that kind of stuff. And then usually you're you're at practice for the higher contact sports. You have to be, um, like, on the field. So I'll be at whatever practice it is Mm -hmm. and then so while you're there you have anything that anything that could go wrong you should be able to handle on the field um so yeah so you have your oh shit kits (laughs) (laughs) um we have like the splints the tapes someone rolls their ankle um sutures yeah literally anything that could go wrong from a nosebleed to a do you have smelling salts yeah Ah, yeah. (laughs) to a like fractured skull you should be able to handle it um so anything from in that realm. Dislocations. Yeah, anything of that. Um, and then after practice, kind of same thing. Usually people cap it at like an hour after practice just for ice and recovery stuff and um, rehabs. But then it always depends on if something did happen at practice, which mm-hmm. is obviously never the hope yeah, that you're going to be not there. Not ideal. Yeah. Um, what you don't want is to have to be there because someone blew out their ACL or you're having to take them to the emergency room because their parent's not here because they're in college. Um so, yeah. It's uh it's important to kind of uh, talk about this too because there's a lot of student athletes or 
parents and as as I mean our viewership continues to grow that they might want that they, they don't know what the heck they want to do. Yeah. We're asking athletes here all the time, like, what do you do? Do you know yet? And me coming from the perspective of they don't have to know yet. Yeah. Like you don't have to go to college in the first two near years and know what you're doing. Or if you don't want to go to college, it's a whole different conversation. But if you are an athlete going into college, like don't think you have to have it all figured out. Mm-hmm. But if you are athletically inclined and want to deal with a demographic, like this is an avenue and here's yeah. a little insight into what it is. And we'll continue to talk about some of those things. There will be things that maybe can't be disclosed. <laughs> but as far as you giving the perspective of this is what athletic training looks like, can yeah. look like, here's what you can fall into, here's where you can go, here's some of the things that we're working on changing for mm-hmm. athletic training, here's the background, the education, the what it takes and what you get to be involved with in yeah. certain levels. So um, I think it's good to have you speak on that. Mm-hmm. And just in this scenario, it's like you're jumping into – preseason yeah evaluations physicals yeah. things like that yeah all kinds of things because basically once like athletes move in they have to be cleared to practice and then it's kind of full force from there yeah um and like another cannonball yeah and another go. cannonball <laughs> um but like depending on so you're gonna have more than one sport obviously but usually you only have like one that's like your your main sport you're like I'm at practice, I don't miss um, for those sports. And then you have to be, like, have hours for the other ones. So yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's yeah. like, okay, so if you're, are you hired for football and then baseball, like two big sports and different ends, yeah. or do you get one sport and are you supplemented? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, it kind of depends on, like, the university and how they structure it, honestly, um, and how many ATs there are. There, There is, like, an AT shortage in especially university settings just because, Depending on where you're at, you could have five sports. Yeah. And that's not anywhere <laughs> anyone could ever handle. Um, and like at the like at Linwood where I went, dance had we had our own athletic trainer, but she had th- three other sports. Yeah, she had lacrosse. Yeah. yeah <laughs> she had three other sports that were more high contact, yes, but we practiced in the nighttime. Like it just you have to have <laughs> the time to deal with something like that and you don't have to be at our practices, no, but we don't have, we didn't have anything like that. Right. Um, and that was because the university didn't set it up that way. Right. And so when you have a university that will set it up that way and mm-hmm. will allow you to do that and like a, a head AT, a associate, they call it, um, who will set the things up like that. You could be an intramural <laughs> AT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that fixes, uh, that makes like the world of a difference. Yeah. When you have a, a good associate above you to mm-hmm. like protect you almost. Yeah, that would be uh, if I, I think if I were if I were to have gone the athletic training route, that would be because just like here, it's like everybody needs a break. Mm-hmm. That's why we take the time off that we do. And like last week, we mm-hmm. were all on vacation Fourth mm-hmm. of July every year. We take off, but to go from let's say football, fall sport carries into November. Sometimes can get into December, depending on what size school you are. Right. Could go into January. But say some of the the smaller D three school D two D three NAIA mm-hmm. and not maybe so much the D one or maybe some of the lower level D one schools that I don't want to say this in a bad way may never have the opportunity to go into the yeah. January bowl season. Yeah, um, it's like okay, so you go from August to November football, mm-hmm. November to March basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we might throw you in on baseball there too to carry out the rest of the season. Yeah. And then it, for me, that would be like, woof, like more than willing to help out here. But I, I, again, I don't know that dynamic is it's like, I'm guessing some do that mm-hmm. where it's like AT shortage or however they have it structured. You could go bang, bang, yeah, bang, bang. You could. And it could be an opportunity too for those of you that may be interested in athletic training or have a student athlete that's going into that mm-hmm. might be a question to ask, ask better questions, get better answers of what is your AT schedule structure? Yeah. Do you go from fall sport to fall winter sport to winter spring sport? Mm-hmm. Or how is that structured for me? Yeah. Or am I divisioned out? Am I going to supplement some help in a winter sport mm-hmm. or a spring sport? Or am I going to take on something after a winter sport into a spring sport? Yeah. It's probably an important question to ask so you yeah. know what that looks like. It's also important to know what kind of sports you're going to like working with. Like, And that's why they obviously do. You go to school for it and you try everything out. But I knew from day one I was not going to do anything. Well, I did not want to do anything, like, in a in a gym, like, in a court. The the basketballs, the volleyballs, I wasn't around it growing up. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't know anything about it. Um, and, like, doing all of that, like, I learned that 
obviously I like football. I've been around it my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like being around soccer. It's just a good culture. I think the, the environment and the culture of the team will make or break your AT job a hundred percent. Um, and having a good working relationship with the coach Mm -hmm. will make or break it. And so there's just a lot of things that you have to, um, kind of have a backbone for as a AT and not be like the only girl. And, um, Cause it's like, if I were to work with football, I will be the only girl around, Yeah. but like, perfect, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Not your <Yeah>. water girl. <laughs> Knowing your own limitations. <laughs> yeah. And so like, if you are someone who doesn't have a problem with knowing your limitations and speaking up for yourself and not taking no for an answer, right. then AT is a good thing for you. If it, if that is a uncomfortable thing for you. Yeah. If you feel like you're always being pushed around. No. Not you the will, right fit you. You will, you will drown. Yeah. Cause I mean, let's just call it what it is. A lot of athletes, while... They might. They're not all assholes. Yeah. But sometimes it's no different than playing, you know, baseball. I mean, I was talking to Sarge about it the Mm -hmm. other day, and I was like, you know, it got to the point to where once mask went down or once I stepped in the box, and even in the race car now, it's like get in the race car. It's like everything goes from here to here. Mm -hmm. And our demeanor changes, which can be taken in such a way that's like, wow, what an ass. Or it's just like, hey, can you give me some tape? And it's like, and then you overread into that as – you know, oh, he thinks he can just push me around. I'm just some peon. No, that's a you problem. Right. Yeah. That's a you problem. Yeah. But if that's your default, maybe there's something to work on there. But in, in maybe you're in athletic training and you need to hear this mm-hmm. now to overcome that because a lot of times now I will say too, unfortunately, and there's stereotypes and dogmaticness with everything, that I would say culturally across sports, you can pick some good yeah. culture preferences yeah. as far as sports Mm -hmm. um like you said you've always said like soccer being one of them Mm -hmm. just such a a good culture and you know but that might look different for lacrosse that Mm -hmm. might look different for football or basketball and um so for those of you athletes that um and you know who you are you know what those sports are the the, you know dance gets put down here for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and because of these two it's like you guys know who you are be better yeah and treat these people who are supporting you they are not your water girl Mm -hmm. they are not your servants your um oh you need to tape that again that's not tied like Mm -hmm. be like hey appreciate that but can we do it a little tighter like i don't mean to be like have a little regard and a little preface and and try to take the blinders off when you're dealing with people Mm -hmm. like athletic trainers care staff and things like that yeah and i think like if if you are like wanting to do at or anything in that world like just just shadow like get out and figure out what you like. I wanted to be a PT until I was 19 and then I shadowed one day and I was like, that's not what I wanted to do. (laughs) And so like, it's never too late to change whatever. I changed my major actually like the first day of college. I went to one class of like pre PT and I was like, this is going to bore me to death. (laughs) They're like, we're going to be in a lab all day, every day. And I was like, learn all the sciences. No, I was like, that's going to be a no for me. (laughs) Changed my major. And I was like, new schedule. Here I go. Yeah. (laughs) But like, it's just, it's never too late. And so if you're, even if you are like doing AT right now and you're like, it's just not cutting it, which is a hundred percent. Okay. That's a lot of people don't enjoy athletic training. Yeah. It's kind of nitty gritty. You have to do the, the stuff you don't like, like scooping the ice and you have to do those things. And if you don't like it, it's okay to get out of it too. Here's one thing that sold it for me because I, I, I did take some classes as I needed to more take hours to finish yeah. my degree. I got to my super electives that I could just, but I, I, I took things like medical terminology. Mm-hmm. I took athletic injuries. and I took more of the AT classes. Yeah. Um, and I had a class where, and, and you love this, you Tyler, most ATs are going to love this. <laughs> uh, my buddy JT Goins, he, he practices down in Springfield now, I still I believe still. And uh, I do not like watching injuries. <laughs> the broken bones, the dislocations, the... Sam's like, no way. <laughs> Sam's like, <"They're> like but. <laughs> I, I hate it. Yeah. I don't... If I was there in action, saw it happen, like, I, w- I could jump in blinder. I, I yeah. I could take care of it. N- AT would not be, f- be for me just based on that. Mm-hmm. My buddy Cody Leathers, our junior year of high school, is actually right before I had my back injury playing football. Um, we had this cool kickoff return thing and it was a bunch of fakes and deeks, and he ended up with the ball, and I ended up lead blocking and clear the first guy out. And he was, like, on me. Like, I could feel his hand on my back going and following me. Cleared one guy out, and one of our guys missed a block here and got him. Uh. But the guy I cleared out, Cody made a cut to get away from him towards the sideline, stuck his foot in his face mask. Oh, gosh. Took it right off the side of the leg. 
and I'm looking back because I didn't feel his hand anymore, and I didn't hear a whistle yet. Yeah. So I look back to find him, and he's on the ground, whistle blew as I was turning around. He's holding his knee like this. Leg is here, foot is here. Yeah, that's... Compound yeah. flew him out. He has two titanium rods in his legs. Cody Leathers, if you ever see this, shout out, brother. <laughs> hate that, but I'm glad we got past it. We visited him up in the... Um, up at surgery. He was going in for surgery, actually, when we saw him. They said everything, but before they did the rods. Yeah. And we were actually there once they gave him the stuff, and uh, he was, like, talking to us, talking to us, and, like, eight seconds he was out. Oh, yeah. Off of surgery. Oh, yeah. But, like, like that kind of stuff's important to know, like, day-to-day, dislocated shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, no. No, thanks. Yeah, and, like, I guarantee you that there was probably a, um, like, AT with them in the hospital Mm -hmm. because like that is another thing that if you do have like a season ending a big injury like you have to follow it and take care of it and yeah that's like the other part if you're not like an empathetic person don't be an AT you have to be empathetic like I have too much (laughs) sometimes but like you have to because like especially in the college setting they're away from their family they're probably in a like team or a sport that they are a little fish in a big pond mental yeah um, you become their 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 source of mental is mm-hmm. from you, um, and there's been so many there's so many stories and whatever of like you become their support system, you become their. You're home the away first from line home. in a lot of different ways. Yeah, they're the you're they're gonna be the first person that they ask everything, mm-hmm. and like you might not <laughs> know anything about whatever they're gonna ask you, but like you you are the only person that they feel comfortable asking and and we say this all the time paraprofessionals Mm -hmm. meaning the people who support the doctors um even here paraprofessionals will always have more trust Mm -hmm. and most often 99 percent of the time will have more trust more deeper relationship potential at least with whatever client you're working with yeah student athletes you know orthopedic cases if you know geriatrics pediatrics mm-hmm. those parent like the the nurses the athletic trainers the people who work alongside of the big prefix mm-hmm. you are going to be that first line yeah. and they're going to break down to you and and so as an AT making sure that you give that space like you don't have to then combine all your hard assness mm-hmm. to overcome how you think they're treating you because you can fall into that when a lot of times on the mental aspect of this, that could be the first line of making sure that somebody has a great experience mm-hmm. at college or is able to be heard out when they have nobody else around them. Yeah. Athletic trainers can very much not even know. A lot of them out there probably don't even know they're sitting in that position yeah. when somebody could literally be using their help. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's like honestly what I'm most excited for is just being able to like have like I'm gonna have my own team and yeah. like that team is going to be like I'm I'm gonna be their person to come to for all of these You'd things. You'd be mom. Yeah, mom. <laughs> um so like in that like I, I your AT will stick with you. Yeah. Um I mean obviously like very involved in my high school but I still talk to my AT and you can I, have yeah. a great relationship with AT mm-hmm. or you can have a terrible yes. one and it's up to you. It really <laughs> is. And so yeah. Awesome. Well Super excited to see how this unfolds. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, coming off vacation, year, second half of the year. Yeah, A lot let's of good go. things second half of the year here. A lot of good things second half of the year for all of our mm-hmm. personal lives. Mm-hmm. Our kids are starting the next level of school <laughs> and elementary. Um, we, you got engaged. I did. We're doing a little transitioning. Sam's getting married in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um Reverend Doc Throttle here in the <laughs> building. Uh, that'll be a first for me. Uh, but super excited to see where the next half of 2024 goes. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week. See ya.